I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is the 31st of the month of October and tonight by 12 midnight, we'll be having our monthly prayer and fasting meeting that's going to start at 12 and then we're going to be praying at every watch. Now, I told you last month that the Lord command, commanded us, look, if you're a child of God, you should pay attention to the watches. I shared that with you earlier this month. Now, we do this every month, every first of the month. And I want you, I'm inviting you to join us today. See, listen, we're entering into a new month. And the phase that we're entering in, it's not going to be easy. So it's important you know how to enter it and enter it very well. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to join us tonight. Plan for this. Have some time to rest. Now we're following the West African time and because we are, um, uh, we're the one hosting the meeting. So wherever you are in the world, the meeting is going to be via Zoom. The Zoom link and um, um, details are on your screen. So you can copy it down and join us because we'll be praying at 12 midnight. We'll be praying for one hour at every watch. One hour at every watch. And during these meetings, I'll also take out time to share with you what the Lord is saying concerning the month of November. Praise God. So please plan for this. And also I have another, another information for you. This week, Thursday. We're going to be having an all men's meeting. It's taking place in the city of Abuja. The details are on your screen. The venue and the time is on your screen. Two hours, 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to be delving into some deep stuff as it relates to the men or the male species. There's something God wants to communicate to you that is so important now i don't think we're going to be televising that meeting uh, streaming that meeting live i i i doubt it but we'll make the recordings available for those who want it after the meeting because of the sensitivity of the things we're going to be talking about L listening to me the days we live in god is calling in his own precious saints. He's calling them in. He's calling them in. So what about the women? See, we follow exactly the way God commands us. God says, deal with the men. So when we finish with the men, he knows the next instruction he's going to give. If God said deal with the men, surely we're going to do that. But God is saying deal with the men now. So you don't want to miss this meeting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So plan for it. Save the date. 2nd of November is this week, Thursday, in the city of Abuja. It's a seminar. It's we, we are going to talk to ourselves. We're going to talk truth. We're going to bring out God's mind concerning a lot of things because we are repositioning our mind to fit into the thoughts of God, especially in this season praise god thank you lord jesus now can we make requests for our daily bread are you ready join me right now in faith and say father i demand right now for my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit so you know i was sharing with you yesterday we are in a very, very serious time. And this is not the time to play games. This is the time to face reality. This is the time to face truth. Jesus told us something about the Holy Spirit that when he comes, his job is to guide us into not some truth, all 
truth. Now, you know, sometimes they say the truth is bitter. But he said it, this, this is also true. The truth heals. You see, lie can cover the issue for a long time. But eventually, someone will dig out the truth. And that's where the trouble will start. The same trouble you have avoided for many years, it will still come. But when you deal with the truth, even if it hurts, the healing will be perfect. You see that? So this is a period that as God's children, you must, your prayer, your utmost prayer is for the ministry of the Holy Ghost that Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. It's not a time to follow any man. A lot of men are going to be making errors. Now, when I mean men, even preachers, especially preachers, are going to be making errors. So you have to really, really be careful in this season. That's why I implore you, listen, the best solution for you is training yourself to hear and fellowship with the voice of God. That is your best bet. Nothing else can beat that. Whatever decision you're about to take, make sure you hear from the Lord. Make sure you hear from the Lord. Not this season. This is not a season to move anyhow. This is a season to be precise in every action that you are taking. If it's not God that is commanding you, if it's not God that is leading you, you might just walk right into a trap that may even end your life. Satan is desperate more than ever before. His plan in this season is to take out a lot of people from the face of the earth, cause confusion in every way. I told you what he's after. He's after the opening of the book. He is against it. He will fight it. But the Lord is saying the book is being opened. You see, why is he fighting this book being opened? Because the opening of the book itself will reveal his judgment. Because the opening of the book, I told you this earlier last month, this, this month of October, the opening of the book is going to reveal all the errors that he has established. And not just exposed to take them out. Because God is establishing his original plan. No, the Lord said to us, the unedited plan. That is what God is going to establish. And the truth is, whether you like it or not, it has already been written. And that which was written, was written since before the world began. And that's what God is going to be dealing with. No matter how long a lie have existed and established itself, when truth comes up, truth judges the lie. So you see, that, that's why you shouldn't even engage in a lie in the first place. Don't make decisions based on a lie. Don't build empires based on a lie. Don't cheat people. Lie against them. Lie to them and build empires and establish your thing, it will all be wiped off. Except the Lord builds the house. The laborers are laboring in vain. In vain doesn't mean they will not build it. They will build it, but see that building, that energy they expended, all the money they spent to build it, they will realize at the end of the day that it was not necessary. That's what makes it vain. It was not necessary. Except the Lord builds, they are laboring in vain. So everything Satan has done, everything he has established by his own wisdom, it's in vain. It's in vain. Because there's no, there, there's no use for it. God will never use something he did not put. He's never going to use something he did not produce. He will not use it. <laughs> no, he won't. You see, if some of you don't understand, you remember David when he was king. 
He sat down one day and thought to himself, like, look, I'm in a beautiful palace, but look at the ark of God. It's just in one tent. I want to build a befitting place for God's ark to dwell there. Now, you look at that and say, oh, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. So God had David planning this thing and, and David called the prophet and said, this is what I want to do. And the prophet said, yeah, cool, king, do what's in your heart. Thank you, sir. And then the prophet left. That night, the Lord appeared to the prophet and said, go back and tell David that, no, I will not let him do this. I don't need a house. That's what God said. I don't need a house. What kind of house do you want to build for me? But then God now said, look, don't do it. Now, the truth is, the, the real reason God didn't want David to build that house, because he didn't need one. I, I want you to listen. He didn't need one. And it's even limiting to create a place and say the, the God will dwell there. Come on. He said, heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. So how big is the house you want to be, build that will contain him? But you see, he saw David's passion. So he said, okay. I'll let your son build it. But not you. There's a reason for that. I'll share that with you some of the, someday. So Solomon came and David instructed him. David actually got everything that is needed to build the house. Bought it and kept it. Arranged for it and kept it. So Solomon came. And say, look, my father told me about this house he wanted to build. I'll build it. And he built it with so much grandeur. And I mean, it was so excellent. And then he prayed and said, God, please let your spirit dwell here. If you study the scriptures, see, <laughs> God accepted the house and that his presence would dwell there. But God gave Solomon a condition. He gave Solomon a condition by which that house is going to be sustained. But Solomon did not keep that condition. So Jesus came later. And you know, they were taking, they were walking and the disciples saw the temple and they began to speak of the glory of the temple. And Jesus said to them, see this temple you're looking at now. I'm telling you the truth, a day will come when not one stone will rest upon another. You see this building you're seeing? A day will come when no two stones from this building will be together. You know what that means? Utter destruction. Complete destruction. Complete annihilation of the temple. You will not find it to even rebuild it. Now, why would Jesus make that statement? The temple is already standing. This is the temple Solomon built. And his temple is standing right there. And Jesus is speaking this kind of bad prophecy against the temple. What did the temple do? Simple, simple, or simply put, Solomon did not fulfill his condition. So see that temple will not stand forever. That's, that's exact. Because in the first place, God didn't need the temple it was man's um, wish it was david's wish it was david's idea and god accepted it because it was a good thing good gift that man wanted to give to god god accepted it but then he put a condition to it so stories today that temple doesn't exist and believe me God will not put any energy in rebuilding that temple. He won't. Because he doesn't need one. You remember in the book of Revelation, John was describing the new holy city that he saw that descended from heaven. Then he made an observation. He said there was no temple there. Huh? How come there is no temple there? And he found out because God didn't need a temple. God didn't need a temple. The temple he needs is us. And he will dwell in us.
we are his temple. Now that's what, that's what has been from the beginning. That's what the desire of God has always been until David brought this wonderful request before him. And because in his dealing with man, see, that's the thing about God. He, he kind of lets man have, I mean, okay, do what you want to do. Let me see. Because you've made the request. Okay, go ahead and do it. But here's the condition. Can you keep it? So I'm telling you, that book is being opened. No matter what the devil does, no matter what the devil tries to do, the book is being opened. So everything you see from now on, every move you see from now on is for one reason. Satan knows the countdown has started. You are thinking, oh, the rapture of the church, Jesus is coming back. Satan is looking at his judgment. He knows his time is short. So he's going to ravage the whole earth. He's going to do everything to cause chaos. And guess what? The people who know their God. You who know your God. How do you know your God? You hear his voice. It's as simple as that. Oh God, I know. No, do you hear his voice? That is the only thing that will save you now. We've been talking about this thing for many years. You've ignored it. Now you have no other option. You must know his voice. You must hear his voice. You must listen to his voice and obey his voice. If you don't, your life is at risk. Your life is at risk you have a short time to prepare if you are not conversant with the voice of god but i pray for you that the spirit of grace will rest upon you that god will do a quick work in you he will bring you to speed in hearing his voice and understanding his speech and be careful you see why you cannot listen to anybody you cannot listen to anybody because, you see, if it's not the voice of God, then it's not for you. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You can't trust any man to hear from you now. Because even the one you're trusting to hear for you is trying to hear for himself. There's going to be chaos. But God loves his children and he will cover them and cover them properly. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where is that secret place of the Most High? The place of his voice. Where he will speak to you, you will hearken to his voice and you will be at peace. Praise God. Our time is up. Hey, but listen. Don't miss the meeting tonight. 12 midnight. 12 midnight. We're meeting via Zoom. The information is on your screen. Copy it and let's meet at 12. And trust the Spirit of God is going to visit you mightily. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you at 12. Yeah. It is good. Bye.